Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome back. Shout out to everybody tuning in right now on the What Did He Said RSS feed, the What Did He Said podcast feed. We got Cafecito Time, we got Red Pill Tamales, we got What Did He Said, we got random spontaneous podcasts Ooh. dropping all the time. Today we have the homie, man. The homie was in the area. And uh, I said, man, stop by, bro. Let's pull out the microphones and let's record. Let's give the fans more content. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Casa Bling Studios, we have Israel Garcia. What's, yeah, what's what up, up, Big Don? Bling, baby. Man, it's great to see you, brother. Um, um, thanks for having me at your Chingo, uh, Chingo Bling Studio, Aquí bro. Man Cave, Casa carnal. Bling Studio, bro. There's a lot of Murero happening uh, behind the camera yeah uh, I, li I like it oh I, I thought it was, oh like i thought it was a wallpaper but it's not no, no no that's one of the backdrops for my wife and uh i was telling you off the mic that um my wife hit me with like 10 complaints oh. yesterday when i got home tired and beat up and exhausted from jujitsu class one of the complaints bro how quickly within the within the that you walked in tired from like um, as soon as i walked in out no nah, getting getting choked out <laughs> getting choked out yeah, like literally as as soon as I walked in, she's in the kitchen. Uh, she's like trying to wash dishes. And she's like, first of all, your daughter gets a hold of markers and she wrote right here. So oh. you need to go get the touch up paint. She's like, and oh. that that podcast room you yeah. got, you, you need to figure out how you're going to organize that because I'm tired. <laughs> I am tired. Ooh. I'm fed up. That's how you that's how you roll, man. You get no, no, no chill time, bro. Ni madres, carnal. So, está medio cabroncito, but uh, but it's all good, brother. Well, you're coming along well, though. I mean, you got yeah. Go I mean, with... camera angle wise, the people don't know that there's some luggage and luggage. a keyboard and some picture frames <laughs> leaning. Uh, there's a bag of winter clothes. Uh, we got Juan Perez yeah. in the background, but we don't have room for three microphones. Yeah, that's the thing. Actually, no, we do have room for three mics, but this uh, interface I have can only take two mics, so. So shout out to all everybody that sends super chats, all the patrons. Soon we will have a four track, a four input. Dang, bro, <laughs> put improvement aquí, bro. So what's up, bro? You are you bringing back your uh, vinyl snacks podcast? Yeah, I'm gonna be doing vinyl snacks again. I, I, for those that don't know, vinyl snacks is a little podcast that I started maybe like about a year ago, and I pretty much pick out a record and I talk about the album and stuff like that. So I have like this whole you like thing that I'm working on. Mm -hmm um because i like vinyl records and stuff like that so everywhere that i go and do a show in another city i always buy like a record and stuff you know any genre so I decided to just yeah anything mostly like my favorite records to buy are like old classic country records bro. Uh -huh. yeah like like hank williams george jones oh george Johnny jones. cash dude you know bro. I mean? like those, old, those 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 men from the, hey, the wait. days cuando era puro vato alfa we puro, sí, puro vato alfa bro this is hey do you know do you know tennessee whiskey sung by george jones yeah he's the original one people don't know i i, I think somebody sang it before him like david allen oh wow Cole. was it david allen Cole? yeah i think it was david oh, wow. allen Cole. Um, I, I know i knew george jones had sang it that's my jam hey yeah. look my wife and I, we went to go see Chris Stapleton, right, at the rodeo. Oh, that's neat. And it was like 75,000 people in uh, NRG Stadium. Wow. That's where, they, that's where they play football and all kind of stuff. So the Houston rodeo is a big deal. Yeah. And um, we saw Chris Stapleton. And, of course, he ends he ends the show oh, with his closer. version. I, and, I, oh. dude, I'm looking around like. These people don't even know that's a cover. Bro. Yeah, it's a cover, dude. So everybody else, everybody else got their cell phone line. I'm just yeah. sitting down. <laughs> I'm singing to George Jones. <laughs> Your <laughs> yeah, dude. strawberry. Yeah, wow. that's true. Your red strong oh. as a glass of brandy. Wow, Ch hey, Chingo, I didn't know. I didn't take you and for a... I stay stoned <laughs> off your love. <laughs> Oh, dude, dude, I didn't take you for a country. Hey, guys. carnal, this for is a classic hey. alpha country. Me van a decir sí, carnal. Sela, <laughs> hey, homie, you're supposed to only be jamming tigres, carnal. Yeah, have you ever heard this? There's this one uh, podcast. Oh, it's not a podcast. It's a show. I'm sorry. On uh, Cinemax called uh, Tales from the Tour Bus. Have you ever heard it? it? No. It's, uh, it was, it's, a, it's a series created by Mike Judge, the guy who did... Yeah. Uh, Beavis uh, and Butthead. Yeah, Beavis and Butthead. And then the, what was that? Idiocracy. Idiocracy. 
So he, he did this show called um, Tales from the Tour Bus. It's so freaking hilarious, dude. Anybody that gets a chance, highly recommend you guys check out Tales from the Tour Bus, dude. It's like an animated series where they interview bandmates of old school country singers, bro. And they tell stories about touring with with the country singer. So mm. one of the episodes is like George Jones, and mm. like they have um. And it's on cinema. Yeah, it's on cinema. I do get it on Prime, Amazon Prime. Oh, okay. But okay. I saw it on that channel. But oh my god, dude, these country singers from back in the day were crazy, dude. Like they would party freaking hard. Puro moonshine. Dude, yeah, dude. Like I like George Jones. Obviously, was a major alcoholic, dude. Uh-huh. Like. So they just tell all these stories about all these badass country singers that used to like party and stuff and dude, super um, hilarious show. You know, uh, this is like on makes set. you admire it a little more. Like what? They, it makes you admire them like their work more because they live what they say, dude. You know? Yeah, he stopped loving. He her stopped loving her today. today. He's a badass, man. dude. Um, yeah, shout out to George Jones, brother. It's the the guy is here. Um, when you talk about like hunting for vinyl and hunting for records sometimes i look on youtube like uh jay dilla producer and like how he like de- they'll deconstruct samples they'll be oh, like yeah they'll be like this is a hit song for common and before that he never really had a hit until he hooked up with this producer out of detroit named jay dilla and how he would piece together and chop samples yeah. and basically a lot of these producers like Obviously, like Kanye, I'm sure, but like yeah, Just yeah, Blaze, yeah. I mean, a yeah, lot of these producers, bro. Dude. Like, like what I pictured when I picture you hunting for vinyl, I picture you almost like a producer, like looking yeah, for drum loops, yeah. looking like what do you look for? Like, Inspiration, kind of, like, yeah. I mean, there's weird because whenever I go like vinyl record shopping, it's always like I, I kind of go there with an open mind, but there are obviously I always do go for a classic. I always like. For whatever reason, I like old classic country records because they sound really good on vinyl. Mm. Like so, some about old classic country is just sounds so nice mm-hmm. for me on on vinyl. Um, but I also try to like find like I'll also get like one random record too that I don't know, like a band that I don't know or mm-hmm. whatever. Just and I'll and I'll make the choice based on the record, mm-hmm. you know. So I'll see what the what the cover art is, mm-hmm. you know, and then you read the back and then. Mm-hmm. There's all these interesting stuff that you mm-hmm. wouldn't find because now they don't. You just get them online, you know. Mm-hmm. But now you now like back the records they have like little booklets and mm-hmm. you find all these cool stuff. And there's all these cool bands that I've, like gems. I've come across that are old bands like from the 70s and they're just like man, this is a good band. Like and you never really heard much of them. It's it's so, yeah, it's refreshing to hear like that analog. Yeah, like just finding something. The crackly. You know that some hip hop producers they'll even overlay like vinyl crackle on top of their digital beats wow. so there's a song yeah there's a song called um uh, lemonade and uh i was watching how they the producers were breaking down how they made it they're like well first we hit up our guitar player and originally the concept was like a rock star that was the name of the track and the way a homeboy played the thing and then we added this and we sped it up and we 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 looped this and we layered that and we added drums. And then they were That's like, wild, dude. and then they said the finishing touch was to overlay like a vinyl noise, like dirty. Wow. It's like gr- making it gritty, making yeah. it warm, making it vintagey, making wow. it analog. Like, there's just crazy. something about that feel. Yeah, it sounds real nice, man. I don't know. I've always liked records my whole life. Even when I was a little kid. I was how, how many records do you think you, you own? Mm, I probably own... I mean, probably over a hundred records. Yeah, probably over a hundred. Mm-hmm. I nice. started getting like I always had records, but my collection started getting big in like the last like maybe twenty. And, and you're years. not even a DJ, bro. Yeah, I'm not even a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> them DJs though, man. But um, yeah, dude. So maybe like I'd probably say like about a hundred records, maybe a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, probably in the last two to three years, I started to get really like that's kind of what I because I don't have any hobbies. When you're a comedian, mm-hmm. we, we don't have a lot of time. Mm-hmm. And that, that was one thing that I realized. I'm like, man, I have no hobbies. Like, I have nothing going yeah, on. Yeah, hobbies. Like, are it's important. just comedy is all I've ever done. You know, you you so, you could burn out that way. Like when yeah. I when I was chasing my rap dream, it was like no time for hobby. I guess yeah. I guess if you counted like some of these um some of this negative like. Like strip clubs isn't a hobby. That's funny. you know, uh, that's uh, drink a luxury it. dog. Yeah, that's dr- a yeah. Luxury. That's a that's a premium item, sir. Uh, that, yeah, uh, 
but that's why like like the jujitsu stuff it's like oh finally yeah. i found like a that's like important. a good positive healthy a hobby that like tires me out key it really challenges me not only physically but like mentally and all that so so when you did um the vinyl snacks podcast yeah. would you focus on one particular album at a time or? yeah like what i'll do is like um i'll um i'll pick out a record and then i'll listen to it and i talk about i try to talk about stuff about the record or about the artist it just depends most of the time it's like the history of the artist or something that happened to them so any type of interesting thing that i like that i find interesting about that person or the album or something i'll do that so i'll like look up their history like you know i did one on buddy holly and i talked about him dying and I, how i went to like i try to affiliate with stuff that i've been to, like because i went to the Ho buddy holly museum is that like know? lubbock or something yeah it was in uh -huh. lubbock yeah. you never been there not he's not the museum no. oh it's cool dude yeah. yeah the buddy holly museum um paul mccartney keeps it up he pays for it yeah people wow. don't realize that 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 buddy holly was um paul mccartney's like biggest influence bro mm. he even named the beatles after buddy holly and the crickets yeah mm -hmm. buddy holly from from freaking how'd you figure that Lubbock, out Texas, you heard about bro. it yeah i read about it like he's a huge like wow. buddy holly oh, fan bro they cut he even copied his sound because buddy holly was one of the first artists that had like the fundamental rock and roll sound which was the drum the lead guitar uh uh i forgot the bass and i forgot what the way he his setup was mm -hmm. but there was a, a certain setup that buddy holly created mm -hmm. that artists like the beatles a lot of rolling star they all copied that from him so he was way one, over yeah, there he was a England. revolutionary for for his time yeah what what are, what are some of your favorite buddy holly songs um there's one called um ah uh, well i was just sitting listening to it the other day um put you on the spot yeah no there's one <laughs> called um oh, i'm trying to remember um Ravon, I like Ravon, bro. Ravon, mm -hmm. you never heard that? Man, I, you got to sing it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. No, no I, <laughs> no, I suck at it, dude. But Ravon's a good one. I like that one. Um, but yeah, a lot of people don't really realize about. But yeah, and then in the cool, the cool part about the uh, the museum is actually have his his sunglasses that he that he was wearing when wow. he died. Oh, what? Yeah, they're on display. Bro. They. So from the plane crash, they got a hold of the yeah. Glasses? They found the glasses, dude, and they have them on display, like they're all like messed up and stuff. But yeah, highly wow, recommend. Bro. Yeah, so I always try to find stuff like that. So I was like, oh, okay, so I kind of mixed a little bit of the history about what happened, and then like how he um died on the plane crash, and I talked about. There's all these weird things that you find out when you look into the history mm -hmm, of things, mm -hmm. you know, like Waylon Jennings, mm -hmm. which is another country. Yeah legend mm -hmm. alpha male See, he was supposed people. to get on the plane oh what yeah waylon jennings was backup guitar for buddy holly wow in Lubbock, texas they were like really good tight friends before but waylon was became a solo before, artist yeah before waylon became waylon like way before waylon wow. became waylon. but he was his backup guitar player and he toured with buddy holly waylon jennings and um he flipped the coin with uh, i forgot who it was and he lost the coin flip so he had to go on the bus the other guy went on the plane and they crashed. But like Waylon was supposed bro. to be on that plane. We would have lost Waylon too. Eesh. I know, man. It's the, so when you did Vinyl Snacks podcast, explain the snacks part. I don't even know why I said, oh, okay, yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, I don't even, it was just like the first thing I thought of, like Vinyl Snacks. Because I was like, I kind of wanted to, because everybody's been telling me like, well, you need to do a podcast and you need to do this. And you got to do this. So, um. I wanted to do a podcast, but I didn't want to do a podcast where it's just me talking. Like, I don't know. I just want to do something more interesting, you know? That's so, what podcasts so, are, bro. Yeah, yeah. So I just decided to just do a podcast on on a theme. So I chose vinyl records, you know? Mm -hmm. And and then I was like, well, I don't, I don't want to make my podcast too long. I don't want to make it an hour, an hour and a half. So I just decided to make it like about, uh, I think it was like seven to like 10 minutes. Mm, so oh, they were short like that. A snack, you know. Oh, so okay. I thought it, I thought I was like, damn, Israel like really likes snacks. <laughs> <laughs> I do like snacks, but but yeah. So I called it vinyl oh, snacks. So they're it's like, like quick snacks. shorts. Yeah. Mm. So then I want to do this other one where I'm gonna do called vinyl minis, 
and that'll be like like little reels about a certain oh, yeah. record and like you know like facts yeah, and what you yeah, like yeah, about vinyl it. minis you know and then i'll make little ones for reels and stuff so people could just watch something really fast so i just try to keep everything compressed within 10 uh 10 to 15 minutes at most on a some some episodes go a little longer like i did one on tom petty and about his life but i mean tom petty is like a, yeah you know what i mean he's, so he's, so you have a record player and all that then yeah i got a record player and then i'll look up the history i'll write i'll write down some facts about them so when i'm doing the podcast i can read what i find interesting things that i feel like people would like that's to super know. cool yeah 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 so it's all that's cool i, I kind of want to get like a cool like the one you got like where it's um like uh what's it called um the neon lights oh yeah yeah, yeah be neon. Cool. one just says like vinyl snacks you know what dude I, mean? I just did a i, I was love a, the one you have thank you sir i did a I, I was a guest on a podcast the other night it's called the uh, go hard po podcast and homeboy has a real cool setup he actually has a um like a vinyl banner that looks like what do you call that man like stone as it cuenta como, like as if you had a mason it, it's vinyl wow. it's a picture right yeah. but it makes it look like you have like this stone wall what? behind you and then on top of that it's like a big giant logo of his of his show and uh it's got like a microphone like some flames like cool font and i wow. think it has like a little bit of a sign like neon type of vibe but wow, anyway cool. he just has it like on a stand and you would never know when it's on camera wow. so it, it's his logo it gives the wall that cool wow that cool brick mosaic yeah. and it's just a vinyl banner and the stand so yeah that that's a you can literally put that anywhere you can put that in a garage yeah. in a bedroom and people yeah, I'm still have trying no to idea. figure it out because i just moved out here to to houston so i mean i still have to transition like now I'm, now that i'm over here i'm trying to you know create a little studio to keep making more episodes and stuff like, like that. that box right there that's one of those stands and then those curtains, mm -hmm. um, I, they're too short. You see that? I, oh, I didn't read the freaking. Oh yeah, that's I funny. bought the I wrong. Yeah, it. my wife is like, ah, yeah, you funny, really need dude. a you you need to pay attention. You oh, be high. Yeah, dude. Were you high? Funny. Were you high? <laughs> but like, but anyway, my point is, you can literally put like one of those stands and some curtains, and and that boom, depending on the color of the curtain. You look like you're on the Joe Rogan. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. There's just so many ways you can be innovative, you know. I'm trying to figure it out. But <laughs> um, dude, I wish I knew how to sample uh, better because I would love to be able to set up a turntable and like cool. throw on a record and be like, dude, take that little four bar I'm loop, just... slow it down, dude, add some hi hats, some cool, claps, some dude, kicks. Right? Yeah, that's that's an art in, within itself dude i know like the beastie boys got a lot of like they're still getting sued bro <laughs> for samples yeah dude for a lot of the samples in the records they would sample a lot of music so they're they didn't get it cleared sued. they didn't get it cleared. no they didn't get it clear well, i can't back believe back in the day you know they're sampling, yeah like, but nothing. they they were on major labels and yeah. like major labels don't play they make sure yeah everything yeah. is like super legit yeah i mean everything sampled dude there's so many beats that you never even imagined that have been sampled like so many like artists sample beats bars isley all that brothers yeah, yeah isley brothers everybody oh, dude Brown. everything it comes like i've always found it like the more i get into music like the further you go back like hey wait that's a sample fool like what i know they just mm -hmm. took the beat and they did somewhere dude you know what uh what happened to little flip with uh, Sony Records, um, you remember that song he had? Love you, flip. you okay? Remember the game over? Flip, yeah, game flip with flip. the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pinche Pac Man. Game bro, over, bro. Do you know? Do you know what happened with that? All right, so so Flip was signed to a a local label, right? It was yeah. uh, it was. Yeah, like, I remember his local label. Yeah, Sucker Free Records. So yes. It was like it was like homegrown, grassroots, yeah. super out the trunk, and um, I guess the CEO Hump and flip they started uh, flip kind of, it was like two kings in one castle flip was being influenced by his dad who had just came home from prison and there was a little bit of a divide happen starting to happen so long story short flip ends up going to, to new york to sony records behind hump's back and like was just making a scene basically yeah, saying yeah, like man yeah. give me the recording budget like yeah, i need yeah, money I know, now yeah. and the ceo hump got the call from new york sony like hey dude your artist is up here saying that uh to give him the yeah, studio man. budget and he's just like no 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 no, we're gonna keep doing it the way we've been doing it yeah. tell him to come home we can finish working and send a budget where you always send it so long story short they were like hey flip take this beat make a song out of this and it was the and game that, over beat what? right so now check this out 
So now they go on to sell millions of records. Uh, Hump, the CEO of Sucker Free, says, you know what? I'm going to audit them and we need to go through y'all's paperwork to make sure y'all y'all aren't charging us for stuff. And basically, we need to see how much yeah. money y'all really owe yeah, us yeah. because we sold millions of records. Yeah. So then w- when he started auditing them, that's when they were like, oh, go check your mailbox. And they're like, what? And it's like lawsuit from the company that owns Pac-Man. Oh. And Namco? it's like, Namco? yeah, Namco. Yeah. So basically, it's like, oh shit, we're being sued by Namco because <laughs> of that. Namco, dude. Because of that beat Sony oh, gave you, and it looks God. like it looks like the amount we pretty much are going to be um, owing them in legal fees and everything else and damages is pretty much what Sony owes us for the millions of records we sold. Now here's the wow. kicker. Ready for the punchline? Who owns Namco? Sony. Oh, <laughs> oh my shit. god, dude. Yeah. Full that. circle, my guy. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, wait. Damn, dude, that's uh, wild, no, bro. Uh... Check, 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 check. Damn it. Okay, the headphones are not all right. Headphones are not working. Are we still working? Long with story. The mic? I hello hello okay check the mic for me please test one two test 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 check it again test one two test 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 check check one two okay uh, I think what happened was I laughed too loud oh, <laughs> and, and it, it it glitched but I don't know <laughs> if, if the microphone caught that but basically what I just said was Sony Records owns Namco Sony wow. Records. Bro, that's how there's so many stories like this. There's so many dirty stories. Um, Somebody I hopped hopped on YouTube this morning and I saw someone did a reaction to one of my songs that came out through uh, Warner Distribution under Asylum Records. So that was a music video that I paid for. Right. It was shot on film. It wasn't digital like back then. Everything was really expensive yeah. to produce. Like yeah. you literally had to have film, like 35 millimeter film. And long story short, bro, I'm looking at the comments of a homeboy reacting to my song uh-huh. and my video. And people are like, man, this song is like nowhere to be. This video is nowhere to be found on YouTube, whatever happened. Long story short, bro, with my contract, I own the song. I own the album. Asylum Records was just my distributor. Okay. So it was called a PMD deal, which is pressing and distribution. Okay. Meaning y'all press up the copies, yeah. y'all distribute it, you get y'all percentage. get paid. Yeah. No, they get a percentage. Uh-huh. So I get the majority of the okay. book. However, it all sounds great on paper. Like, yeah. oh, wow, right, Chingo, cool. you still yeah. own your masters. You yeah, own the yeah, intellectual yeah, you property. Creativity. So I paid for the video and everything else. So why is it that when once we parted ways, why is YouTube still thinking that they, basically they, I think Warner Warner Music was in uh in like some type of a lawsuit or beef with YouTube or something? Mm-hmm. So like everything that was under their catalog at the time yeah. was like blacklisted or whatever the word is yeah. to where y'all can't upload this to YouTube. And, they, it's like, it must be and I'm like, yo, it's the ass to reverse that stuff and like yeah, how do you gotta go? Th- I'm sorry, you gotta go through so much crap. I'm assuming, right? Yeah, dude. Like I've already told my lawyer several times, like, hey, bro, uh, I own the song, I own the master. We parted ways. I shot the video. Like it's my, Your it's my property. property. Yeah. And why can't I upload my property to YouTube? Shh. It's like still in the system as like on some list <laughs> wow dude. so it's like that's just one of the little annoying headaches and like what song was it Can you tell uh, me? like this and like that the wow. hood got my back yeah i'm making paper stacks like the mess of light crack and it's like that's one of the many headaches of dealing with yeah. these people bro i mean i know dude like honestly being an a, a artist like as far as being like a musical artist that's probably one of the hardest Thing to dealing with there's just so much to, to, to put up with especially when you're dealing with major labels bro. yeah labels and, and producers and like as a comedian i don't know i just feel like comedians have it a little more easy maybe it kind of i think produce. it just depends bro like well i guess the times have changed now people can kind of 
it's, I can the imagine it's a little more open now. No? I can imagine there being a lot of headaches in the comedy world. Um, you know, sometimes you get you get uh, managers <laughs> at clubs oh, yeah. that have an agenda, yeah. and they might not like your politics. And then next uh, thing you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> next thing you know, you ain't performing Ooh, there. But hey, it's all man, good. They hitting me up. What's going on? Or nah, you're hmm. demoted. Oh, here's That's your weird. Hey, you can do a Wednesday, bro. You want a Sunday? I was like, damn, bro, I was doing weekends for y'all. We oh, was wow. making y'all all this money. That's really weird. Strange. Um, but like, I feel like for comedians, the headaches come or start really coming in when you're popping. Yeah. So sure, there's a lot of headaches when you're struggling up and coming comedian. It's yeah, just it's a, different, a different type of struggle. Yeah. But like, I really feel for the ones that are like super in demand and you're getting pulled in so many directions you don't know who's no, who's really no. your boy you don't know yeah. who's just trying to ride your coattails yeah yeah um just trying to get the stuff out of you mm -hmm. that's a lot bro it's a lot to deal with man yeah because when you're popping bro that, that's when the baby mamas come out the woodwork uh, when you're popping bro like i everybody like i out. dude like comedians that are super in demand and having to be everywhere like i don't envy that like no. I, uh, I've had those thoughts before, you know, because like, you know, I've had re recently, you know, with all the stuff that's been going on, like, I just don't like to be on that kind of a level and demand like it's it, it takes very special people that can handle that. And I don't know if I could ever I, don't, I never got into comedy to be famous or anything. Like, it's never a th like I just want to be funny. Like, you know, what I mean, like, I don't know. I just, you know, I was like, I want to do comedy. And I don't want to you be just want to be like under the radar. Yeah, funny. like I've always wanted to just be this guy. It's like I sell my tickets, I'm comfortable, but to get to that level gives me anxiety. Like, because I know people like that. I know comics that are famous that, you know, everywhere we go, like they're, they're just recognizing them, and and then they're around with certain people that I'm like, ah, it's kind of weird. Like it's just a weird level to be in and i'm i don't know that if i would like you i just, feel like yeah. i would be turned off and i would walk away from it or something. you just got to be like super strong oh, man, super focused you have to know who you are when you yeah. when you're coming in the that's game hard, man. like think about like the level of success that like pitbull has attained you know going from underground nobody like handing out mixtapes like just trying to do a freestyle for the dj on the radio hoping they could play it like waiting yeah, around dude, waiting yeah, around the for the thing. dj at the club to play your track yeah. and then to all of a sudden like now you having to do the new year's eve drop on tv now you having yeah, to perform at like billboard latino awards Ooh, now know. you gotta fly Grammys you gotta fly to germany now you know and it's like and you got that moochers, you got different people with their hand out, you got different people Lawsuits all of a sudden saying, like, oh man, if it wasn't for me, or yeah, oh, I remember that yeah. fool when blah blah yeah, blah. We doing that. And it's like, think about how emotionally strong, like how I know, dude. I give them a lot of props, bro. And then that's what everything though, like you imagine, bro, like athletes, like say, bro, imagine you're a boxer that's finally getting those big checks for those big fights, like athletes like whether you're a running back or an mma fighter or anything sometimes you're having to deal with like man my homies from the hood man i can't i can't abandon them or yeah, or like dude yeah, yeah. i gotta go train but my baby mama's tripping yeah you're having to dude. you're having to play all these different chess games and then emotionally you're like i gotta get a phantom i can't yeah. just have a toyota a prius yeah yeah so now it's like so now you're getting oh. sucked into it a little bit yeah like sucked into the lifestyle that covered only i know man it's it's, it's that's hard. why i'm glad i'm not on that level dog you know yeah. what i'm saying i like to be low-key that's good cool, <laughs> know you're legit but you are but you are on that you, you've experienced such yeah. an amazing career ups and downs ups and yep. downs mm -hmm. but you've maintained your 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 you're like a anomaly in the in super the entertainment industry <laughs> super anomaly yeah out. yeah for real that's it's a it's and you've done it your way man and you'll be switching it up you know what I mean? That, that's Which I right think there. is gonna extend your career further and make it grow even more, bro. Well, see, let's get it because uh, it's it's what it is, bro. You reinvent yourself constantly. Mm -hmm. You're one of those people that reinvent themselves. See, somebody need to listen to Israel, man. Y'all don't, y'all don't. Hey, you're not even that. I'll tell you an example. You know who did that? Bob Dylan. Mm. Bob Dylan reinvent. The reason why Bob Dylan is so like relevant even to this day is because he was constantly reinventing himself. Like his sound, his and... sound, his music, his style. Like every decade, he's just some some other dude now. You know, 
when he went electric, it was folk, then he went electric, then from electric, he started doing like blues. And then he just kept, she keeps changing and people are like, what is going on? So when you do stuff like that, that means you're creatively expanding, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and experimenting with your voice. Mm -hmm. So it was cool to like, you know, watch your career that way. And then with all the stuff that you've changed and being honest and staying true to yourself mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. most important thing, you know? So, yeah. And no matter what people will find you, you know, I know the, when all this thing happened, when you started coming out and being yourself more, like mm -hmm. there was a lot of people that, you know, were hating and stuff like that, but I knew I'm like, this is going to work out for him so well, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like all these people are talking all this smack or like, well, I don't know where they're, they're at. It, I'm, I'm, like, I'm trying to it. see where they're at, bro. I'm like, Yo, we on the brink of World War Three. They turning America into a, a third world country. The value, the the dollars being devalued. I, know, I, I was like, dude. we had four years of peace, and all my haters, I'm like, damn, bro. Like, I don't, yeah. Maybe they all them follow me. Well, they're got, they're I, about to arrest Donald Trump, bro. Allegedly, but then you think they're gonna arrest him? I Imagine think, the arrest of president. Oh, it's gonna be like he's gonna be like oh, Pac, dude. bro. Over what? Over oh, like a misdemeanor, bro. He'll be walking out. <laughs> Have you seen the AI images of uh here? Let me show you. They somebody made uh because AI, you know, you could just tell it to make something mm. and it'll make it. Uh check this out. Um that's wild what's going on, bro. They made it made it look like a CD cover, bro. Look at this. It looked like a two oh my god, that's yeah. hilarious, dude. Can you see they made it look like a Tupac. Sorry, my screen that's protectors all cracked. Dude. I mean, that that is insane. Uh, you know what we watched last night? Something's fishy, and especially because didn't he win like a what? What did he win recently? A recent poll? Uh, the uh, what kind of poll did he win right well, now? Like, like his landslide, a, bro. He's ahead of yeah. He's like, like in the lead landslide. Of... So they're saying no. He's he's gonna win again. Dude. He's gonna win the Republican nomination, bro. There's just yeah. nothing stopping him, dude. You know what we watched last night? Um, on Fox Nation, it's called uh, Anatomy of a Hoax. Have you heard of that? Anatomy of a hoax. Anatomy of a hoax, bro. So it's basically about that uh, Jesse Smollier, the actor. Oh, okay, yeah, the guy who's dude. They basically did a documentary. They're interviewing like the the two African dudes that he paid to pretend to From, be like, Nigeria. Or yeah, 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 Nigerian dudes. He paid them to like beat him up, put on maga hats, uh, put some rope on him. They showed the rope, bro, like some cheap ass shit oh, that my, you couldn't even dude. tie down a mattress on the back of your pickup. Dude, how much time do you have on your hands? Oh, say, you my mind. He, dude, they showed how how he called them. Was like, "Hey, man, can I trust you? We got to meet Ooh. up." And the way he pitched it to the two brothers was like, "Hey, on the set of Empire, somebody sent a letter threatening me, and they didn't take it serious enough. So you, we're gonna do this video where it'll just be viral and stuff on social media, and then that way the the cast and the producers can take me more serious." And but then it was like to like. Yeah, it's really interesting, bro. Like, if you can, uh, we'll give you our uh, Fox Nation code so you can log on there and yeah, check I'm it out. But it was so crazy, bro. Like, how the white liberal journalists were so afraid to doubt Jesse. Like, anytime it deals with race and hate crime and ethnicity and anything like that, they want to be an ally so bad that yeah. they, that even though all the reports weren't adding up, like everybody was like, bro, he's lying. It was a blizzard. It was a rich neighborhood. He was getting a subway sandwich during the blizzard. Yeah. And then he, when the cops showed up, he ended up calling the cops. That's why the Nigerian brothers were like, bro, he, we didn't know you were going to call the cops and try to pin it on us. So when the cops showed up, he still had the little, the little rope around his neck. Wow. He was like, they threw bleach on me. <laughs> Dude, that's, man. How much time did he get? They, they let him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They um, no le hicieron nada, they way. Released him. He wait. He wasted taxpayer money because not only not only did he waste like the Chicago Police Department's time and and money, but also, um, it was in the middle of all this division in 2020. There was all this political hate. He it he basically threw Trump supporters and like half the country under the bus. Basically making it seem like they really are violent people. They really are racist. And they really go around hunting actors. Yeah, dude. And then he went on stage, bro, at an event. And he was like, but I fought back. I'm the gay Tupac. <laughs> I'm the gay Tupac. <laughs> no, mommy. Wait, he said he was the gay Tupac? Yeah, he said. He oh. Said, 
Yeah, he was like, I'm the gay Tupac. I fought back. And oh, people, my were, God. Like, uh, people were like, oh, now that's how we knew he was lying. I'm trying to think of a, a, a gay Tupac song. I to... ain't a killer, but don't push me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just makes up a make Tupac a gay lyric. You know? <laughs> it was so ridiculous, bro. It was so ridiculous. But uh, it's like a series. So it's like episode after episode after episode. And my wife was like, "Who does this?" She's like, "What kind of world are we living in?" Yeah, dude. And everybody was so quick to believe him, and because they wanted the narrative to be. This is the type of country we live in. Look at the kind of country we live in where a black actor, a gay black actor, can't yeah, even can't walk, walk down the street, street and buy a sandwich. Yeah, the they're just so quick to want to hate on America yeah, that they're like, dude, oh, this perfectly fits my narrative. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it's, I think it's a, like, I guess, like, whenever I do my set, like, whenever I'm doing stand up, like, I talk a lot about growing up Mexican and stuff mm -hmm. because I grew up in the border, like, in El Paso. Mm -hmm. What's up? Puro socorro, Texas. I love your video, bro. Which one? Cubo. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I was just, I was showing it to my mom yesterday. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But you, you, you put some cool locations. Yeah, there, we got bro. all the landmarks. Yeah, you got all the good spots. I'm man. coming back to El Paso April 6th through the 8th. And, there it um, is, baby. The comic strip or what? Simon. And uh, who knows? Maybe we'll shoot another video while I'm out there. If not, I'll just be at a jujitsu spot in the daytime. Yeah, dude. So, yeah, I grew up right right by the border in Socorro, Texas, outside of El Paso. And then... um, For those that don't know, so, Socorro, Socorro means... Help! <laughs> Help! But so I grew up right outside in Socorro, and I grew up right by the, um, by the border, bro. Like literally right there. Like there's, we didn't even have a, a fence. Like it's just the river, and like that's it. There's not even wow. like a wall. Yeah. So um, like, would people just cross right there all the time? Oh yeah, 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 all the time. You know, they would cross over, and they would pass through our house and everything. You know. Oh, so, hola, buenos días. Yeah, my mom would make. A, my mom would always help them out. Like, ay, mijito, pobrecitos, they're hungry. They need, they need food. They need food. I'm like, mom, we need food. Okay, <laughs> stop giving away our beans. The like, that, we don't have that, and yeah. to give out, you know. Yeah. And then I'm like, and but then my mom had that bata that was see through. Oh yeah. Right? <laughs> so I started realizing they weren't going for the food. They were just trying to check out my mom's titties. You know, <laughs> so like, it's like mom, they don't want your burrito. They want your taco. Okay, <laughs> they're trying. Damn it. so yeah that's a new joke i'm working on nice. um so yeah dude so it's like one thing that i at least for me from what i saw and what i grew up because and then i grew up right next to the cotton fields right so they i got to see illegal immigrants working in the crops illegally you know um picking cotton bro straight up like at four or five in the morning they were already there at the time i got back from school they're still there till the sun goes down um and I realized a lot of things like growing up and then I know I talk a lot about my family and being Mexican and stuff like that. But halfway throughout my set, I do say like, I don't know if this is going to offend anybody or anything, but I'm glad that I'm, I'm American. Like, mm -hmm. I'm glad that I'm from this country. Mm -hmm. Like, because people, a lot of people that don't see it are those people that are very like, Oh, this country is this yeah. or that. And what they did to yeah, the natives. They don't know, bro. They don't see it. They're like somewhere in a place where they're not actually seeing the struggle that there's that is happening in other places, you know, for, for these kinds of people where they where they are being exploited and you know their country, their governments are corrupt and all these types of things that are happening for them. So like to me it's like I I, I feel very grateful to be part of this country. You know what I mean? Like yeah they they I, have, I mean they, obviously there's always things that we could fix. Nothing's ever gonna be perfect. But for the most part it's the best that I feel like we can do. I mean obviously there is growth that could be done. But I, I feel like I'm pretty proud, dude. Like, I, ca I can't complain, bro. Especially about, like, like the idea the idea of what America is, like, just freedom. Yeah. You know, the, the founding like fathers. It's a melting and, pot from all over the country. Like, like you don't, yeah. nobody else gets to say that. that this is, this nobody is a, else gets to they, say they that. They try to say America's all racist and all bad. But, like, we have so many minority millionaires and some billionaires even. Yeah. And only in America yeah, could that happen. Dude. And that's why you got everybody wanting to come here yeah exactly dudes because you have a lot of opportunities you know there's a lot of growth here for for anybody to come out and 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 if they do it you can do it dude america is one of those countries that you could do whatever you want so this whole idea that you're being 
held back or anything like that. That's a, that's just poison for your mind, dude. Like I never, I remember when I was growing up, I was kind of liberal in that sense. I, oh, I was yeah, always yeah, really yeah. anti-police. Um, I was anti, um, stuff like that. I was always really like that, you know, but then as I got older, I was always blaming like, you know, the white people are holding you down and all yeah, the, yeah. the type of stuff that they put in your yeah. head when they you have all the up. privilege. Yeah, yeah. Like you can't do anything with your life because you're this or that. Yeah. But I just, I got to a point and I got it through it through stand up mostly because I became independent, you know? And when I started doing comedy and doing it full time and going at it and stuff like that, then I started to make my own merch, you know, when I just said like, you're not a victim, bro. Mm-hmm. If you want something, you can get it. You're mm-hmm. here. You can get whatever you want. No, mm-hmm. there's no white per- there's nobody holding you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is nobody holding you back. Nobody's ever held me back from anything. Nothing. You know, and once I once I took that victimhood mentality out of my mind, I started to get better. I started to accomplish more things. I started to like, like I said, I started making my own merch. I bought my own equipment. I bought my own little um my own my own uh, you became a capitalist yeah dude i became a little <laughs> capitalist bro i bought my little speaker i started doing house parties you know yeah. i started like well if nobody's opening up doors for me at the clubs and i'm gonna open up my own i started doing backyard house parties but you know quinceanera whatever and i just started to grow and then that just changed my whole mentality to where i am now where i don't feel like nothing can stop me so you know? so you rode with uh raymond orta a lot too right Come yeah on. yeah in the beginning yeah raymond was one of the first comics that i ever got to do I would go on the road with. We were, he was one of my very first friends in 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 stand up comedy, and um, I've learned a I learned lot. A lot from I've him. learned a lot from Raymond. Oh, man. he was he was very yeah, he was so generous, yeah. generous dude. Um, um, he he hooked me up with this sponsor right here. Shout out to Tehuacan Mineral Water. Oh yeah, that's good, right? Yeah, it's delicious. Um, yeah, I love, it. love it, love mineral water. I love Tehuacan. Yeah, Raymond um, was was extremely instrumental in my in my career and in my life, just in general. Just a good friend and. Um, I started touring with him when he went viral with the cowboy stuff. And I learned a lot from him too. Like he taught me a lot about the merch game. He taught me about like crowd work and stuff like that, because I was, I was coming out of the comedy clubs, you know, like in El Paso at the comic strip, cause there used to be a door guy. And I always thought in my mind, like, well, comedy only belongs in comedy clubs. You know what I mean? And Raymond took my, took that and was like, no, dude, we can do a backyard party. You know what I mean? We can do a, a, a company party at eight in the morning for dumpster for a gar- uh, gar- garbage people you know what i mean like he started taking me to all these extreme uh, festivals and like uh, all these hard difficult places to do comedy at. challenges He's, oh man that 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 time with raymond was was very crucial for me. that's why i grew a lot and i'm really good like i'm not fucking tuning my horn but <laughs> but i got to a level where i can manage it you know no matter where i'm at i could already kind of like all right i can do it because of all the stuff that i learned working with raymond you know like that's yeah. finding a way out of any situation pretty much and like um i know as a white belt comedian i would i would tend to have a hard time i guess when when you're new right when you're new and you're like a white belt comedian it's the it's easy to get spoiled and like yeah. it has to be a specific type of cl- it's got to yes. be packed it's got to yeah, be like yeah, this yeah. it has it's to be my crowd audience, yeah. and then you're like in the little small room at yeah. the secret group or something it's just like yeah. i can't perform here this is yeah. this isn't my crowd like mm-hmm. it's a bunch of college girls and it's not even packed yeah and, yeah, yeah but mm-hmm. i've seen you kill in in all kinds of uh oh yeah you situations. saw me perform at the secret group that was the first time i think yeah, we actually right. saw you I, right. I met you through jerry garcia yes. at the lol yeah and you saw me I was perform like, who, I'm like, who the hell is this battle yeah that's right that's when i met that's when you saw me perform yeah i met you at the lol and you saw me perform at the at, at the, the secret, secret group. Yeah, yeah. yeah you murdered me yeah me and my wife were very impressed we're like oh, damn wow, we're like dude. oh he's got it thanks dude that's right that's a while ago man mm-hmm. yeah wow. so i learned all that from that from raymond you know the comedy is just everywhere you got to be able to just kind of and a lot of comics won't do that they won't challenge themselves that much you know especially when you Stay have a bet so especially yeah especially when you have a fan base and stuff like that you kind of more you know you kind of want to stay and see where you kind of want to stay. I don't want to bomb. I don't want to bomb. Dude, well, there's nothing worse than a bomb, bro. It's such a brutal. People don't get it. Like, if you're not a comedian, you don't. I don't know how you feel about it. It's a different kind of pain. It's, it's a very, <laughs> yes, very, very different kind of pain, dude. It's it's excruciating. It's emotion. It's emotional pain, dude. Like, you're like, ah. Oh. Which now I know when I bomb, uh, it's. I have like bombs and I'm like, hey, it is. It comes with it. You got a bomb, dude. It's normal. But there are certain bombs. You're like that now you it's do. like it's good for you. 
Yeah, yeah, it's healthy, you know, but there are some 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 that do hit you like, oh, that one was... I think I'm a quit. Ese si me calor, dude, you know? Si, what si, I mean? si. Or people are just like, oof. Sometimes, bro, like, I'll be, like, about to bomb. Just, like, I feel like, okay, this isn't even starting off right. I mean, even yeah, in, yeah, in Pearsall, bro, even in Pearsall, we did that, uh, that gig out oh, there together. Yeah. And there was, like, a lot of stuff happening. Yeah. A lady was trying to live stream, like, the whole thing. Yeah, I and I just those people, bro. There's just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like on, two bro. people watching. They're like, nobody... Yeah, why yeah, are you yeah. live streaming that? Like, why don't... If you're one of those people, just fucking choke yourself. <laughs> yeah, it, it's horrible, man. Some people, they just never been to a comedy stupid. show. They don't know how to enjoy the moment. But, like, in that case in particular, I was like, oh, okay. Uh... I just, you know, I just kind of was in my like, you got to control the crowd and like, don't give yeah. a damn. Yeah. Like, well, no yeah, fear. It's so small crowds. So it's not small crowds, small towns. So mm -hmm. small towns are a little bit more rowdy, right? So Pearsall can, it's, it's, you're controlling a, a, a mass. You know, mm -hmm. you're controlling the masses. It's one person trying to control a bunch of rowdy people mm -hmm. around alcohol, especially and, in small towns where they're not used to that kind of stuff. Exactly. So it's very like, tricky you know what i mean you got to keep them like and, and then, then they'll start yeah. over here and then it goes over there and if you don't know how to work it then and then right before i went on stage just... right before i went on stage one is like juan Perez is like hey man um i think it's like a couple tables with like some gangs some gangsters something like that but uh <laughs> and yeah. I was like, oh, oh yeah i was like right. well, was... i was like wait, wait what do you mean yeah, like, yeah the like do i need to do i need to be concerned like what do you what do you yeah, tell yeah. me i'm gonna run up on yeah, stage dude. what are you it looking was, for me dude it was it was it was a there was a moment of uh tension there oh, no, i don't so, know if I'm, you I'm felt so. it when you were up there who were they tense with me what did I, I say? Yes, dude. Like it, it was weird, bro. It was. I was like, oh man, we're gonna, about to get in a fight with these what were they, uh, cholos, bro. We're gonna what, what, die. Was it a joke? Yeah, like they were already getting drunk. I kept calling him Malito. Uh huh. What about him? Yeah, well, that was the table. They were the ones that were getting up and like toasting. And oh, stuff. they're friends with him. Yeah, and then you were hitting them, and that girl was part was of with them too. Was the, she was the table with. So and you were like, I'm gonna stop until you. Until yeah. You know that one. And that they were getting mad. Yeah, oh, because yeah. I thought it was like the like table. Over there. I went over there with, mm. the, uh, with the security guard. Yeah. I mean, I'm a white belt, two strikes. So I mean, you yeah, know, it's whatever, big dog. Yeah, yeah, I know, dude. You know, I know. <laughs> I'll, I'll pull guard. Bro. <laughs> I get on my back and just see. Lie. I don't. I I don't. I don't do any of that. I just I just get on the ground. I will call police, bro. Did y'all see Takashi get jumped in the restroom? Oh yeah, at an LA fitness, off, dude. What happened? He was like at Equinox or at, he was at a Planet Fitness or something, and um, he to try to touch a guy, guy's butt. Or <laughs> I don't know, dude. I, apparently, I don't know if the people that jumped him, if by chance they like caught him slipping there, like he had been talking mess to them. I don't know if they were like social media influencers. Um, first of all, if you're gonna commit a crime, don't film yourself and don't let nobody yeah, film dude. you doing it. Uh, it. Everybody wants clout these days, so they recorded it. Yeah, or someone, yeah, oh. someone in there recorded it. But my thought the whole time, bro, well, I was like, I was like Takashi, man. Like I wanted to coach him through it. Like, yeah, bro, <laughs> Like, bro, like ankle, oh, yeah. reach for the ankle, no, bro. Come to el character, the one that, the one. el mama, el, el, uh, the karate one. I do. I, I don't have a karate. Oh, um, oh we would do Tio Juventino. Yeah, he, Tio Juventino. He would do some jujitsu sometimes. That's that's <laughs> that's that. <laughs> That'd be a funny video for you. You could do a little reel, like where you give Takashi some advice. You know, that is, yeah, yeah. Hey, Takashi, por si te van a hacer jump, can. Mira, aquí estamos viendo lo que le pasó a Takashi. Hey, carnal, look right here. This is where you messed up. Like pretend you're at the gym. And when he comes up, for, I mean, he did. I mean, he. Some of the stuff I saw, I was like, okay, he's got his legs up at least, like towards the people where if they had gotten close again he could have did an up kick you yeah. know what i'm saying um they wow. probably would have beat him up more but but at least like i mean i don't know dog i, I mean know. that guy's gotta live his whole life like just i was just like get him in your guard like do a heel but as he no sabes way no sabes carnal no, 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 it, it takes a lot of mat time <laughs> mat. it's a lot of mat time because we were drilling something <laughs> yesterday like if somebody gets on top of you you know how do you how do you how do you get defend it? it? How do you yeah. get out of that? And that that burned a lot. How of long calories. you been doing that? It'll probably be a year this summer. 
uh, but I'm still, you know, I'm still super green. I know Steve Tamia, yeah, Steve Trevino got. Yeah, he's a blue belt, right? Yeah, he's a blue belt. And my, uh, my. What, what what belt are you? White. Okay, mm-hmm. so, so blue belt's higher than the white. Yeah. Oh. Blue's okay. next. Yeah. Oh, blue's cool. Next. Yeah, I got a couple more stripes so I can get the blue. Uh, but yeah, when when uh, Steve announced that he got the blue, yeah, I blue saw. Belt, I was like, what? I didn't my even know my, my producer Rob, he, my producer Rob, he's a white belt. But it, it, I was like, it looked like he had belt envy. Belt envy. As a matter of fact, I think Steve called me the other day, man. I need to hit him back, see, see what he was talking about. Uh, so look, this is that background banner I was telling you about. See? Oh, that's cool. Our homeboy. Yeah, that's You can't shit. even tell. Oh, yeah, especially on that camera. Looks, that, looks, that looks sweet. On camera. It's the color. Mm-hmm. Especially because they do that on purpose. They like different color sh- shades. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, hey, we're going to knock out some content. You got a minute, bro? Y'all can yeah, uh, stick can, around. Yeah, hang out for sure. Um, but yeah, man, uh, Israel's in the area. Uh, Juan and Israel stopped by. I said, man, let's record. The people want more content. Uh, we're trying to build up the YouTube. This this is going on the YouTube. Who knows? Maybe we'll make some clips out of it, some shorts, some reels. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm always down to work with you, man. You're one of the. Sure. You're one of the. And just a quick shout out. This guy right here is one of the most um, humble, genuine, nice, nicest people I've ever met in the game. Tough. Um, you forgot tough. Tough. You know what I mean? Read the script the way to I me, told you. If it was up to me, I would have already given him that black belt, bro. Size. You get a shortcut. Size. But so yeah, keep going strong, Chingo. Hey, when it comes to you, when it comes to being humble, bro, my, I'm a black belt. Boy, bro. I will. I'm You're a, a black belt humble. When yeah. it comes to being when it comes to being humble, yeah, carnal, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. black belt. <laughs> it's like the most unhumblest line you can say. <laughs> basically yeah yo israel garcia israel garcia one bad comic uh follow him all over social media bring back the vinyl snacks podcast yeah i will we're gonna be kicking it off pretty soon so yeah yeah let, let me know how i can help uh one bad comic pretty much everywhere right yeah yeah one bad comic instagram facebook website israel garcia yeah check him out if he's in your town and uh let's upload this and we will talk to y'all soon what did he said podcast follow that rss feed what did he said podcast all the different shows all the different episodes we're just going to put them there so there's going to come a time where you might want to go check cafecito time podcast and and there's going to be an announcement on there saying hey we're no longer uploading here go to what did he said on spotify amazon apple all right y'all peace